the empty chair. Jerry Streisen, a friend of mine in Boston, almost had a nervous breakdown last year. I told him to go to a doctor. Hello, Mr. Streisen. What's the problem? I'm very tense and nervous, Doctor. I haven't been able to sleep for days. Hmm. Have you been working hard? Yes, I've been working twelve hours a day. Well, you should take a few days off. Go someplace quiet and peaceful, like Nantucket. It's a quiet island near the coast of. Jerry took a boat from New Bedford to Nantucket and arrived late Friday evening. He rang the doorbell of a boarding house, and the owner, Mrs. Searcy, answered the door. Then she showed him to his room. Jerry was very tired and went straight to bed. He slept well and didn't wake up until nine o'clock the next morning. Jerry went downstairs for breakfast. Because there weren't any other guests, Mrs. Searcy invited him to have breakfast with her and her daughter Catherine. Catherine was already sitting in the dining room. She was about thirteen years old, with long black hair and clear gray eyes. Mrs. Searcy went to the kitchen to make breakfast. Jerry and Catherine looked at each other nervously for a few seconds. There are four places at the table. Is there another guest? No, we never talk about the empty place. The empty place? What do you mean? Well, that used to be my father's place. Used to be? I don't understand. My father worked on a fishing boat. Three years ago, he went out on his boat, and he never came back. What happened to him? Nobody knows. They searched everywhere, but they never found anything. My mother always keeps that place for him, and she makes his breakfast every morning. That's a picture of him. Over there on the wall, my mother's been waiting for him for three years. Jerry said nothing, but he looked worried. At that moment, Mrs. Searcy came into the room. She poured three cups of coffee and put one cup at the empty place. Jerry looked more worried, and he stared at the empty chair. Suddenly, he heard footsteps outside the door. And a tall man with a black beard walked into the room. It was the man in the picture. Jerry jumped up and ran out of the room. Who was that? What's the matter with him? I don't know. I don't understand. He's a guest from Boston. He arrived last night after you went to sleep. Catherine, do you know anything about this? No, Daddy, I don't. But he's here because he's very nervous. He says he's hiding here because a tall man with a black beard is trying to kill him. Catherine, have you been telling stories again? <laughs> stories, Daddy? Me? How long? How much? Please have a seat. Thank you. I'm Esther Rosales. I've had an account here for ten years. What can I do for you, Ms. Rosales? Well, I want to borrow some money. What for? I want to buy a car. I've been saving for one. How long have you been saving? I've been saving for two years. How much have you saved? I've saved about five thousand dollars. What are you reading? The Godfather. I've never seen the movie, and Bruce told me to read it. It's a very long book. How long have you been reading it? For nearly a month, and I haven't finished it yet. How many pages have you read? About four hundred. I don't like long books. Neither do I. Yes, ma'am. What can I do for you? Hi. Fill it up, please. Regular unleaded or super? Regular unleaded. It's nearly empty. I've been driving all day. Oh, really? How far have you driven? About four hundred miles from Atlanta. That's a long way. Check the oil. Yes. Okay. And finally, news about Kimberly Lewis, the athlete from Pennsylvania. Kimberly is jogging across the United States from New York to Los Angeles. She has just arrived in Kansas City, Missouri. Kimberly left New York two months ago, 
and has traveled nearly 1,300 miles. Kimberly has collected nearly $300,000 for physically challenged children. She has used 12 pairs of running shoes and more than 100 pairs of socks. Operation Diamond Andrea Garvey is the assistant director of the Department of Customs and Immigration. She is preparing her agents for a special operation. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. You were all at Friday's meeting. Are there any questions? No? Okay, take out the photographs from your folders. Look at photograph one. That's Barry Siegel. He's the man that usually flies the diamonds into the USA. And he's the one that will land at the Circle K Ranch tomorrow night. Be careful. He's very dangerous. He's the one that shot a federal agent last year. Now photograph two. That's Gulliver. He's the one we really want. He's the one the Mexican police arrested last year, but they had to release him because they couldn't find any diamonds with him. He controls 20% of the illegal diamond trade. He's the one we have to catch with the diamonds and the money. Look at photograph three. Look at the woman on the right. Her name's Betty Lou Harris. She's working for us. She'll be at Gulliver's house at the ranch. She's the one that gave us the information. Watch out for the two men on the left, Farrell and Casey. They're the ones we've been following. They always carry guns, and they're the ones that will shoot first. Ms. Harris is probably the one they'll shoot. Do you all have photograph four? Good. Look at the airplane. It's a Cessna 310. It's the airplane that brings in the diamonds. It's the kind of plane that can fly under radar, land anywhere, and take off quickly. You can forget the registration number. It's different every time. Okay, photograph five. That's the area they're going to land in. Look at the trees in the background. They're the trees we're going to hide in. There's a road behind the trees, and that's the road they'll have to use. It's the only one. Finally, photograph six, the Circle K Ranch. It's very nice, isn't it? Gulliver has three houses, and this is the one he paid almost $5 million for last year. Look at the car outside. That's the car that will meet the plane. It's the car he always uses. We want Gulliver... Siegel, the diamonds, and the money all together. Any questions? No? Okay, good luck. Making reservations. Hello, Lobster Palace Restaurant. I'd like to make a reservation for tonight. All right. What time? Eight o'clock. Eight o'clock. For how many? There are ten of us. Ten. We don't usually take large parties. I know, but we are regular customers. What's your name, please? Diana Ross. Miss Ross. Of course, that'll be all right. Party of ten at eight. I'd like to get two seats for the concert on Thursday. Where would you like to sit? I'm not sure. Well, here's the seating plan of the concert hall. How much is it in the middle section? Forty-five dollars. Forty-five dollars? That's a little too expensive for us. How much is it in the back? Twenty-five dollars. That's fine. What time does the concert start? At eight o'clock. Do you have any seats left on the Bay Area tour tomorrow? Yes, we do. There are a few seats left. Is that the tour that includes the Sonoma Valley? That's right. How long does the whole tour take? About seven hours. Should I pay you now? If you don't mind. A new job. Jeff, have you seen this ad in the New York Sentinel? Yes, I saw it, but I'm not interested in finding a new job. I've been here since I left college. I like working here. Really? I've only been here for three years, and I'm already tired of doing the same thing every day. I'm afraid of getting really bored. Oh, come on. It's not that bad. You'll do the same thing there every day. Yes, but the salaries are good. I'm not interested in making more money. I have enough now. I can never have enough. 
Of course, you live at home with your parents. I like living with my parents. What's wrong with that? Nothing. But I like being independent. I like traveling, and I enjoy meeting new people. I'm going to apply for the job. Well, good luck. Talking about the weather. Good morning, Libby. Hi, Jake. It's a nice day, isn't it? Yeah. What are you doing today? I'm not sure. I might go to the beach later. Well, take an umbrella. I've just seen the weather report. It might rain this afternoon. Good afternoon, Mrs. Acuna. Hello, Jake. It isn't very nice today, is it? It was a nice morning. It might stop raining soon. I hope so. Are you playing tennis today? Maybe. It depends on the weather. Good evening, Mr. Pastorius. Good evening, Jake. I think we might have a storm tonight. Oh, really? Yes. The sky is very dark, and I've just heard thunder. Oh, great! I like thunderstorms. I don't. I'm afraid of the lightning. Weather report. Good morning. I'm Wayne Porter, and here is the latest weather report from Channel 15. First, the national picture. The Pacific Coast will have strong winds, which might bring rain from Northern California through coastal regions of the Pacific Northwest. In the Rockies, there will be heavy snow. It will be cold and dry in the Midwest, with cloudy skies in the afternoon. Over to the Northeast, where there will be clear skies this morning. There might be some rain in the afternoon, but it won't be heavy. You can expect temperatures in the high 30s to low 40s. Finally. Here in the southeast, it will be warm and sunny in the morning, with a 40 percent chance of rain in the early afternoon. There will be rain in the evening, and there might be thunderstorms at that time. Now we're going over to Joan Zane in our Tampa studio for your local weather news. Good morning. I'm Wayne Porter with your latest weather news from Channel 15. Let's look at the national situation first. The Pacific Coast will have clear and sunny skies all day, but it will be quite cold. The Rockies can expect further heavy snowfalls in the north, and it will be extremely cold. The Midwest will have strong winds coming down from Canada, and these winds will bring a lot of rain into the region. There might be snow in the west of the region later. The Northeast will have cloudy skies with temperatures in the mid 40s. There will be strong winds and heavy rain on the Gulf Coast of Texas, and there might be thunderstorms later in the day. These storms might move across into Florida by the early evening. In Florida, it will be a very hot, humid day with cloudy skies, but there won't be any rain in the earlier part of the day. Now let's hear from Joan Zane for more weather news for the Tampa Bay. A restaurant kitchen. Hurry up, chef. I have twelve customers, and they all want today's special. Some of them have been waiting for fifteen minutes. They're getting upset. I know, I know, but I only have two hands. You'll have to help me. Help you? That's not my job. I'm a waitress, not a cook. Well, one of my assistants is off today, and the other is out sick. Oh, okay. What do I do first? Well, start putting the meat on the plates, and I'll finish these vegetables. Okay. Is that enough meat? A little too much. Take some off. What about potatoes? Oh, put on plenty of potatoes. They're cheap and lots of peas. All right. Can I take them out now? Have you put the gravy on yet? Huh? Oh no, I haven't. Where is it? Here it is. Oh, there isn't enough gravy. There's plenty in that pot over there. Where? Oh, okay. I've got it. Fine. Now you can begin taking the plates out to the customers. Whew! They're hot. Well, use a dish towel. And don't carry too many plates. You might drop them. Oh, I won't drop them. I've never dropped a plate in my life. 